Hello everyone and welcome back. And uh, this is the sixth video of my JavaScript Essential series this year in YouTube. And uh, as you can see, the first one was about uh, uh, variables, data types. And the next one right away is about the document object model uh, on how we can start uh, influence, influencing HTML elements in JavaScript. Then we have this array and function because we needed this in order to learn if else a statement and comparison operators uh, on this part. Uh, in this part right here, we have created this app wherein we can, uh, uh, this app depending on the user input uh, will display a different message, right? So this is manipulating HTML elements. And uh, uh, the, the last one that we did, we have this, uh, coding challenge uh, in creating a basic calculator, which is this one. So for example, we type here some value and uh, uh, we have two inputs right over here. This element right here will, will dynamically change uh, if we are going to uh, press these buttons right over here. Uh, this for basic math operations, all right? So, and right now we have a very, very interesting topic, which is about JavaScript uh, create element method, right? We are not just going to uh, change the text content of a, of a particular HTML element, for example, this H2 right here, uh, by, by pressing some buttons. Uh, we will, once we learn this, we will be able to create an element on the fly, right? Uh, instead of manually typing it here in HTML, we will be able to create an element. For example, after we click a button, that element will be created right here on the page. And that makes the, and, and that is uh, uh, how the JavaScript is, uh, is built, right? Primarily to be able to make uh, the web page interactive. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. We're, we're gonna be learning this, create element method. So I'm, go I'm going to create a project so this is going to be another uh, folder inside of our uh, projects folder here. I'm going to uh, name this create underscore element, right? And uh, we are going to, let's create our index.html file as well as our script.js. Okay, generate the boiler template. Let me maximize this just a little bit. And I'm going to title this uh, project create element uh, method. All right, so let's link first our uh, JavaScript over here. Uh, that's src attribute and then script.js. And we're gonna be creating a div here. Uh, eventually, uh, we are going to create a to-do list application, but our focus is to be able to uh, understand how everything works in a to-do list app, okay? And the first thing that we need to do is the uh, to, to learn how the create element method works in JavaScript. So we are going to uh, title this uh, to-do list. Uh, right now, uh, we will focus on creating the list, okay? Creating an element. And uh, we needed an input for that. And we're gonna be adding a class attribute here. And this is going to be a to-do uh, input. And of course we need a button. And this one, we're going to have an on-click attribute. And we will just type here the word add, right-click over here and open with live server. So let me just put this at the side, arrange this just a little bit so we have more space uh, to work on. Drag this all the way to the left. And uh, for the button, hold on, let me just, uh, for the meantime, uh, the on-click attribute will just be uh, uh, blank, right? And uh, another thing that we need here is the unordered list, right? So we're gonna be uh, adding a class attribute here, uh, maybe an ID, okay? An ID, and we're going to name this to-do uh, list. And under in this to-do list, we are going to leave it blank, but just to demonstrate, for example, I'm going to type here some data. For example, take a walk in the morning, uh, just uh, an example of a task. 
and then uh, uh, breakfast uh, time. So instead of typing here, uh, these elements will be created upon clicking this button. Like we're going to type here like uh, breakfast. Once we click this, this one right here will be created here uh, in our list. So this one will start as a blank, right? So right now, let me just uh, copy all of these uh, so we can uh, uh, paste it over here as a reference in JavaScript. Uh, we are just going to comment that out so that we will not encounter an error. And after this, we're going to be creating variables that will hold uh, these elements, right? So the input element has a class of to do input. And if you are going to paste that, as you can see, there is like a color uh, highlighting, and there's a syntax error because we cannot use uh, minus in JavaScript uh, as a variable name because uh, a minus sign in JavaScript will be used or, or, or being used in calculation. So we can change that into something like uh, in this format, all right? So this is going to be document, that query selector, and then uh, this one is a class, right? And this is going to be uh, to do input. So right over here, it's okay to use a hyphen. And let me just go ahead and copy this. And we're gonna be needing this unordered list with an ID of to do list, like so. And here we are, ju we are just going to edit this one to have a camel case uh, style of creating a variable. So camel case is a convention in uh, or a best practice in naming variables, wherein the first word starts with a small letter and the second word starts with uh, an uppercase, right? For the word input and for the word list. Now we're going to create a function here. So for example, create, uh, item, right? And uh, right now we are just going to test this in which if we are going to say hello, uh, we, we, are, we are just going to use alert first. And of course that uh, function name, we can copy this and place it over here. And we are expecting that if we click this, we will get this pop up and there you have it. All right, so let me click okay. And right now the one that we, we wanna make sure is to when the user accidentally, you know, or forgot to enter data here, uh, if they if they are going to click add, we want uh, this blank. We don't want that blank data to be added into the list. So we can now erase this alert button. We can have an if else statement over here, and now we can now go ahead and uh, uh, create a variable. For example, the uh, the text, the to do text which is going to be coming from here, okay, to do input dot value. Okay, I'm just, I just press control Z because it auto completed into something different. So I'm gonna say if to do text is equal, okay, comparison operator, uh, double equal sign. If it is a single equal sign, you are assigning a value. So if to do text is equal to blank, Okay, I'm, I'm comparing to blank. We are going to say uh, alert and then please enter data, right? And we're going to try that right now. Uh, if we click add, we should see this, please enter data. Okay, and after that, we are going to create now an element over here, okay? So right now, let's just go ahead and delete all of this. Now we don't have a list. So the create element, we have to create a variable, for example, let. Uh, for example, we're going to be creating a paragraph, right? So let p is equal to document. Okay, we always start with document. Instead of query selector, because we are not trying to select an item, we are now trying to create an item. So document that create element. And what it is, and uh, what is it that we are going to create? So the element that we create under the UL, okay? Remember, we're gonna be creating here something like this. Uh, take a walk, right? And maybe, maybe the other one is exercise. Okay, so we are creating a list HTML element, right? 
So let me delete that. So we're going to say right over here with a, uh, a single quote, double quote is also going to work. We are going to create an LI tag, right? A list. So uh, instead of a, this one right here could be anything, right? It could be a P or ABC or X, or you can say my element. Uh, some people will uh, uh, type LM. And, but it's also all okay to create an LI. I might have mentioned paragraph before, but I just realized we are going to put it in an unordered list right here. We don't use paragraph over here, right? But uh, I mean, we can, but uh, normally we do LI here, right? So uh, uh, that's an LI right now. Now, by doing this, we already have created this element. The LI, when we click this button, will be created, but it doesn't mean that it is going to appear on our page. So the first thing that we have to do after creating this element, right now it is stored here in this variable, this li variable. What we can do is add some content. So for example, li dot text content is equal to what, right? We want it to be equal. We are not going to type something here. For example, exercise, right? We want it to be based on what the user have written in this box. So that is going to be this one, right? Equal to this dot value, okay? And then semicolon. Now, after this, after that, even, even if we are going to save this and click, we are not going to see anything, even if we type here. It was created, technically, it's right there, but we don't see it because another requirement, after we create it and add a content, we still have to append it to its parent, okay? So the create element uh, method uh, is only applicable, okay? If you have a parent right here as a reference, so remember that this one is a parent element of li elements, right? And all of these are children of, of this one. So this is the parent of all these elements right here. And we already have created a variable for this ul, for this parent, right? Because we are going to attach this variable to its parent. Okay, we are going to append it. So we're going to say we already we already have a variable of this, which is this one, the to-do list, right? We're going we're gonna say to-do list dot append child right over there, as you can see. What is it that we are going to append? We are going to append this li. That's the variable. And right now I think we're good. If we're going to save this. Let me just go ahead and type something here and click add. And let me double check. It seems that it didn't work. All right, so let me check the, uh, okay, we have a class here. That's a class. We have, oh, okay, we are using, we are using an ID for the to-do list. So for the ID, uh, I was using here a period. So uh, we have to use a pound sign. Okay, so let's save our work and let me double check. All right, I think everything is good now. Okay, so let me type here some data. For example, take a breakfast, uh, click add, add, and there you have it. I'm going to type something, maybe uh, uh, go or read a book. Okay, click add. Now, uh, it's also better that after we click add, that, uh, we don't have to erase this manually. Like after we click add, we want this one to be cleared out so that it is ready for the next input right uh drink uh, coffee for example if we click add we want this text to disappear and we can do that by assigning a blank value for this input element right so basically we can what we can do is just copy this and paste it over here we're gonna say uh, value is equal to empty semicolon let's go ahead and test this out okay test add there you have it it's a blank uh, read a book, hold on, read a book, uh, click add, now we have that, uh, uh, go to 
the mall, all right? <laughs> uh, click add, and there you have it. And before we end the video, I just I just wanted you to see this. Like, for example, if I'm going to click add without without typing any data here, it's going to say please enter data. But as you can see, there's like an empty because this is a list. You know, by by default, uh, a list has this bullet point, and even even if it warns us to enter data and if i click ok it keeps adding a blank data all right but we can fix that by uh, the reason that it's happening because yes it is telling us to uh in, it it remind us to uh enter data right now but after this if else is uh, executed you know uh, it will just proceed by adding the a data anyway so we can fix that by placing an else a statement over here and transfer all of this right here, okay? So therefore, if it is blank, nothing's gonna happen. But if we are going to uh, add data, it will be added. Let's add another one. There you go. Let's add another one. And there you go. All right, so I hope that this has been informative for you. See you on the next one to continue working on this project because although our topic was about create element method, um, we want this project to become a complete to-do list app application wherein we will not only uh, uh, we will not be able to only add data, but we will also to, we will also be able to delete. Right? We will have we will create a button over here as soon as we add some data. Uh, this one will break will, will be created together with a button That's right. We will also be able to create button. In fact, any HTML elements We can create that using the create element method and I hope that this has been informative for you See you in the next one